Hi, welcome to another session of circuits and networks. In today's class 9 under two port networks, we are going to see problem and solutions using dependent source. So here you can see uh, 3i2, it's a current dependent current source which is present in this particular network. And what are the things which we know from our previous classes? We know how to find z parameters with the equation of v1 and v2 as well as y parameters with the equation i1 and i2. So for example, if a dependent source problem is given, how to solve with one method and how to convert the other form of the given parameter, that is what we are going to see in this particular session. So this particular class 9, we are going to treat as dependent source problem 1. And in the coming classes, we are going to see some more numericals involved with dependent sources. So let us begin with the problem. We need to find out y parameters for the network shown in figure 1. So directly first we will go with the approach 1 that is finding out the y parameters for the given network which is shown in figure 1. For that I have the standard y parameters equations in terms of i1 and i2 given by equation 1 and 2. This we have seen in our previous classes. So what I am going to do, I will apply the actual approach to find out the y parameters when second port or the output port is short circuited and in the next step input port will be shorted. So this is a familiar key which we have seen in our previous classes. The only difference is that here we have dependence source. So when the output port is shorted that is making output voltage is equal to 0. So from equation 1 and 2 I can obtain i1 is equal to y11 v1 and i2 is equal to y21 v1. Okay. So we are going to obtain these two values. So for that when the network is shorted this is how it looks like figure 1 changes to figure 1a. Eh? In fact this short wire it will not only short 2 ohms but also 3i2. Why? The same current it is flowing in the output port. So naturally current will form the easiest way to approach it to the network. Hence figure 1a will be changed to figure 1b like this. You can see how the 2 ohms is removed. Actually we can remove this 3i2 also because i2 and 3i2 are the output currents. So when this is shorted this 3i2 will also will go off and this is the actual figure which looks uh, when output port is shorted that is shown in figure 1c. Now with these things we can easily determine i1 in terms of v1 as well as v1 in terms of i2. So let us calculate the RQ1 for this particular circuit. So you can see 1 and 2 are in parallel. So the value re will be obtained as 2 by 3 ohms because the parallel value will be a into b by a plus b. So that is 1 into 2 by 1 plus 2. So this is 2 by 3 ohms. In fact, I can say v1 is equal to 2 by 3 i1. Is it not? We have just terminated this entire circuit with 2 by 3 ohms. If this is true, i1 is equal to 3 by 2 v1. Okay. So I am treating these two equations as 3 and 4. And what we have obtained? We can obtain y11 which is equal to i1 by v1 at v2 is equal to 0 whose value is 3 by 2 Siemens or Mohs. Okay. So after obtaining these two values of v1 and i1 or i1 in terms of v1 hence determining the value of y11 I have to obtain the value of the other parameter that is relation of i2 in terms of v1. For that I am going to take the help of current division rule. So I need to find out the value of current in 2 ohms which is depending upon the primary current I1. So from current division rule when you have this parallel resistors we can get I2 is equal to minus I1 because this current is opposition to the direction of current I2. So minus I1 multiplied with opposite resistors that is 1 ohm divided by the sum of these two resistors that is 1 plus 2. In fact I am taking the value of I1. I1 we obtained here as 3 V1 by 2. So minus as it is 3 V1 by 2 
and this becomes 1 by 3. In fact, when you are going to remove this like terms, you are going to get y21 which is equal to i2 by v1 at v2 equal to 0 whose value is minus 1 by 2 Siemens or Mohs. Hence, we have obtained y11, y21. Now, let us obtain the parameters when input port is shorted. So, when the input port is shorted, which is shown in figure 1D, I1, which is having the relation in terms of V1 and V2, when input port is shorted, V1 becomes 0. So, I1 will be equivalent to Y1 to V2, whereas the standard equation I2 is equal to Y21 V1 and you have plus Y22 V2. So, this V1 is 0, hence I2 is equal to Y22 V2. So, when this wire is shorted, 1 ohms, it is shorted wire. So, 1 ohms will go off. Hence, you will be left out with 2 parallel to 2. So, figure 1D is reduced to figure 1E. And figure 1E is reduced to 1F because this 2 and 2 are taken to be in parallel. So, this 2 and 2 in parallel will give you the value as 1. Okay. So, figure 1D changes to 1E and hence, as 1f. So, after reaching to 1f figure, let us estimate v2 in terms of i2. So, you can see here, i2 it is coming over here, 3i2 it is going from this particular node and the rest of the current is minus 2i2 which is reaching this one ohm. This is the important catch you have to look into the problem. i2 is the output current. 3i2, it is the output current dependent source. So, it is a dependent current source which is depending upon the output current. And this particular node, it is having incoming as i2, outgoing as 3i2. So, what will be the current which is reaching in 1 ohm? That is minus 2i2. Is this clear? Right. So, I am going to obtain v2 as equal to 1 multiplied with minus 2i2. Hence, i2 is equal to minus 1 by 2 V2. With this, I am going to get Y22 is equal to I2 by V2 at V1 equal to 0, whose value is minus 1 by 2 Siemens. Let us take this value as 5. And from current division rule, I am going to take the help of figure 1E once again. Because this 2 and 2 which are in parallel which is reduced to 1. So, I need to have the relation V2 in terms of I1. For that, I am going back to the figure 1E where 2 and 2 which is 1 is replaced by 2 and 2 that is what it is taken. And now, I1 will be equal to what? I1 is equal to minus I2. Why minus I2? It is to become this current multiplied by 2 by 2 plus 2 because these two are in parallel. So, I2 is coming over here, I1 is there, there is a node point. So, I2 is the source current, I1 is the dependent current on this I2. So, I1 is equal to minus I2, 2 divided by 2 plus 2, 4. This will give you the value as I1 is equal to minus I2 by 2. But I2 is equal to minus V2 by 2. So, minus 1 by 2 multiplied with minus V2 by 2, which will give you the the value of y12 which is equal to i1 by v2 at v1 is equal to 0 as 1 by 4 Siemens. So, this we are treating as equation 6. Hence, the admittance parameters are obtained to be 3 by 2, minus 1 by 2, 1 by 4 and minus 1 by 2. This we are treating as equation 7. So, what we have done? We have seen the actual approach or the proper steps which are employed in order to short the output port as well as the input port and hence we have determined admittance parameters. Now let us cross check our result which we have obtained as in equation 7 that is correct or not with another approach. So I have the another approach as impedance parameters. First I will find out the impedance parameters and from the standard formula of converting impedance to admittance parameters as we have seen in our 
previous classes, we will employ that method and we will cross check the result of admittance parameters which are matching with equation 7. So, in this figure 1, when you are going to open circuit the output port, I2 becomes 0, this I2 becomes 0, then 3I2 it also becomes 0. In fact, V2 is the measurement across 2 ohms. And what are the parameters which we can determine? We can determine Z11 and Z21. So, you can see in figure 1G, the figure 1 is changed to figure 1G and V1 is equal to, since these two are in series, 2 and 2 are in series, so 4 is parallel with 1. So, 4 into 1 divided by 4 plus 1, it becomes 4 by 5 I1. In fact, Z11 is equal to V1 by I1 at I2 is equal to 0, whose value is 4 by 5 ohms. Let me treat this equation as 8. And from current division rule, I can obtain the value of I1 dash because we need to obtain V2 in terms of I1. And this is the current I1 dash. It is flowing in this 2 in series with 2, that is in 4. So that current, if at all we are able to make it, then V2 will be equivalent to 2 I1 dash. So, so what is the I1 dash? I1 dash is the current which is flowing in 4. So 1 and 4 are in parallel. So I1 dash is equal to the total current I1. Here the direction of the both currents are same. I1 multiplied with for 4 opposite is 1. So 1 divided by the parallel sum that is 1 plus 4. So V2 will be equivalent to 2 I1 dash. In fact, 2 I1 by 5. In fact, Z21 is equal to V2 by I1 at I2 equal to 0 will be obtained as 2 by 5 ohms. This I am treating as equation 9. I hope you understood what is the actual approach I have employed in order to find out this impedance parameters as in equation 8 and equation 9. Now, you see when you are going to change the input port making current I1 equivalent to 0, then I will be obtaining the values of V1 in terms of I2 as well as V2 in terms of I2. Hence, we can obtain Z12 and Z22. So, when I am doing that, figure 1 changes to figure 1H in this fashion. This I1 goes off and hence V1 is the measurement across 1. Now, look at to the figure 1H, V2 is the output voltage supplying current I2. I2 is reaching over this particular node, 3I2 is going here and I2 dash it is flowing into the rest part of the circuit. What is this I2 dash? We are going to find out with the help of current division rule. So first looking at this network, you have 1 and 2 are in series, the series in combination with parallel 2. So 3 is parallel to 2. In fact, 6 by 5 this is the value of R equivalent. So I can write V2 is equal to 6 by 5 I2 dash because this entire part it is making the voltage drop by multiplying with this current I2 dash. Now what is I2 dash? I2 dash as we have already seen uh, I2 is incoming, 3 I2 it is outgoing. So I2 dash will be equal to minus 2 I2. Just apply KCL over this particular node, you will get the value of I2 dash. And hence, Z22 is equal to V2 by I2 at I1 equal to 0, whose value is minus 12 by 5 ohms. I hope you understood this step, how to find out Z22. Let me treat this equation as 10. Now from current division rule, I am assuming I2 double dash which is flowing in 1 ohm, which is in series with 2 ohms here because we need to know what is V1 in terms of I2. For that, this approach is done. So, from current division rule, I2 dash is equal to I2 dash. Okay. Now, here, for I2 double dash, the opposite resistance is 2 and the sum is the parallel of 3 parallel to 2, that is number 3 plus 2. So, I2 dash is equal to, so I2 double dash is equal to I2 dash times 2 by 5. So I can obtain V1 is equal to 2 by 5, 2 by 5, I2 double dash. Is this clear? Now I2 double dash just decrease the value. So I2 double dash is nothing but this I2 dash we have obtained as minus 2 I2. So minus 
2 i2 times 2 by 5 which will be giving you the value of z12 is equal to v1 by i2 at i1 equal to 0 whose value is nothing but minus 4 by 5 ohms. I hope this step is clear. Say so this 2 it is as it is, 5 it is going to the denominator. In fact, i2 dash is nothing but minus 2 i2. So that is why this i2 dash is changed to minus 2 i2. That's only the approach we have applied. i2 dash is equal to minus 2 i2. Because you are applying KCL over this particular node, i2 is incoming, 3 i2 it is outgoing. Therefore, i2 dash will be equal to minus 2 i2. Is this clear? Right. So from this, we are framing equation 11. So from 8, 9, 10 and 11, we obtain the value of z parameters which is equal to 4 by 5, minus 4 by 5, 2 by 5 and minus 12 by 5. Now, I will be converting z parameters into y parameters from the uh, approach what we have seen in our previous classes. For that, let me find out first the delta z value. So, delta z is nothing but z11 multiplied with z22 minus z12 multiplied with z21. So, this will be giving me the value as 4 by 5 minus 12 by 5 minus of 2 by 5 and minus 4 by 5. This will be giving you the value as minus 8 by 5. So, this is the value of delta z. Now, what is y parameters in terms of z? 1 by delta z. Uh, z22, z11, minus z12, minus z21. So, here you have the values. I am just replacing the values. So, delta z is nothing but 1 divided by delta z. Just we got the value as minus 8 by 5. And just I am replacing z22, that is minus 12 by 5, minus of minus 4 by 5, minus of minus. So, this becomes minus as it is 2 by 5. And this you have 4 by 5, which is the value of z11 over here. Now, just multiply this 1 by delta value into the matrix. So, you are going to get 3 by 2, minus 1 by 2, 1 by 4 and minus 1 by 2. Now, this equation 12, we have got the same value what we have applied with actual approach of admittance parameters. So, what is the conclusion here? Whether you employ the direct method or this conversion method, we are going to get the same values of admittance parameters. So, I hope you understood this particular class. In our later classes, we are going to see the same numericals uh, pertaining to dependent sources. We will find out the transmission line parameters, the hybrid parameters, admittance parameters as well as the impedance parameters and we are going to convert one parameter into the another parameter, especially the problems we know with dependent sources. So, I hope you like this video. Please share among your friends, subscribe to this channel and please press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.